for you? What's that called? Central timer? Huh? Yes, yes. Central. Namdu yes. Eastern Gira Takana. Yours is Eastern, right? Correct. Shanta Namdu South Alva. Nam South. Oh, it's a southern time. <laughs> few from Karnatak, no? Atul Rai, Priyadarshan Tumkur, uh, Vijayesh, uh, Hassan. Yeah, Vijayesh is who you spoke with. I know, Rai, Atul Rai means Mangalore, Tulu. Uh, Priyadarshan Priya Tumkur, there's one more, founder NECC. Correct. Mm. I'm just seeing that screen there. Mm. Right, right, right. <clears throat> In Hebrew, Kaita uh, Dikane, once they are. Um... Yeah, yeah, me, me, no issues. Anyway, it's a pain, so I let, let. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> There's some chats. Can't unmute my microphone. I think uh, Vijesh is yeah. saying. Jyotsna is telling everyone. Rajeshwari. Oh, she's announcing you. Raju, your former skipper is announcing your name. Prasad and Lakshmi. Hello. Namaskara, hello. Just want to be sure uh, you're able to hear me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know whom you're addressing. If you're talking to us, yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, this is Ashwin here. Uh, just was waiting for people to join in. I think we have everybody here. So let's let's get started uh, without wasting time. Uh, namaskara, hello. Uh, good evening. Uh, good morning to all, depending on from which time zone you're joining us. Uh, on behalf of 
Hoychala and uh, NCA family. I would like to take this opportunity to first uh, wish everyone a very happy Diwali, and would also like to extend a warm welcome uh, to our very first episode of Stump Mike Conversations. Uh, I would like to start uh, today's proceedings by giving a very quick introduction uh, to the two organizations, uh, Hoysala and NCAA. Uh, both Hoysala and NCAA are based out of Boston, Massachusetts. Hoysala was uh, formed in September of 2019 uh, by a friend and founder, Vijesh Hassan, uh, with the sole purpose of bringing like-minded sports uh, in particular, cricket enthusiasts and their family together. Uh, one of the very first such an effort was working with Mr. Jatin Patel uh, and uh, successfully conducting the ACF coach certification program in April 2019. We were also very fortunate that Mr. Shivnara and Chandrapal accepted our invitation, visited us, uh, and was part of various events we conducted. Uh, including youth training session, which was conducted in collaboration with NCAA. The club and its members also played a key role working with MSCL and helped organize the women's tournament in October 2019, which was also graced by Mr. Shivnarayan Chandrapal and Mr. Jatin Patel, among others. Members of Faisala volunteer their time, visit schools, organize and promote and try to spread the name of cricket. Talking about NCA, NCA we would like to probably think of as an extended family of Faisala. NCA was formed in 2019 with a mission to build and establish grass, grassroots cricket in New England across America. Coach Raghu is helped by his close friends and fellow coaches who work closely with kids focusing on every aspect of the game in, in a structured coaching program. Multiple kids trained in NCAA were nominated in the under-18 trials. A couple of kids were also selected to represent minor league teams which was conducted recently. Good morning. Good. Thank you, Ashwin. I think we are having some technical issues, but we will definitely catch up. Uh, good morning, viewers in North America, and a very good evening to my dear friends, Shanta and Kalpana. Shanta was my captain, and Kalpi my favorite wicketkeeper, and indeed a very stylish opening bat. It's my honor and my pleasure to introduce you both our guests this evening. We are all very excited to hear and would like to be inspired by listening to you both today. I would first like to introduce Shanta Ramaswamy, who has put India, Indian women's cricket on the world map. She was recently awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award by the Karnataka government. For those youngsters who may not know Shanta Ramaswamy, this is her journey from being a player to a legend. Fasten your seatbelts, guys. You're now going to hear a lot of firsts here. She was the first captain of the Karnataka state team and represented the South Zone for 21 years. First, 
women Indian cricketer to have scored a century in test cricket, both at home and abroad. She was the first woman, Indian woman, to have a hit a sixer. She was the captain of the Indian team from 1976 to 1985. And she was the first Indian captain to have won a test match against West Indies in Patna, which put India on the world map. After fin finishing her career, cricketing career, Shanta gave back to the cricketing community to becoming a coach, a mentor, and an inspirational leader as well. She was the coach of the Indian team that played against Australia in 1994. She was the chairman for Women's Selection Committee by the Women's Cricket Association for six years until BCCI took over the administration and named her as the coach of the Indian team in 2000, 2008. She chaired the Indian team selection committee for five years. Here these guys, first woman cricketer to be nominated to the cricket advisory committee of BCCI, which comprises of legendary cricketers like Kapil Dev, Anshuman Gaikwad, and is responsible for selecting the most coveted post in world cricket. That is the selection of a coach for both men's and women's team. First, women cricketers have been elected. She was the first women cricketer to have been elected to the Apex Council of BCCI for a three year term. Now, coming to the awards, she deserves every recognition that she has received over the years from 1976 to 2020, such as the Arjun Award by the government of India in 1976. She bagged the prestigious CK Naidu Lifetime Achievement Award by BCCI in 2017. In addition, she received the Ekalavya Award in 1992, Rajyotsava Award in 1997, and the Lifetime Achievement Award in 2020 by the Government of India. Shanta, again, it's my privilege and my honor to have you as our guest for the first ever Stump Mic Conversation. Shanta, could you please say a few words and we, because we are all waiting to hear from you. Over to you, Shanta. Shanta, are you there? Are you able to hear me, Shanta? I can hear you, but okay. uh, I, I was muted. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, you are. Thank you. Over to you. Thanks, Mira, for the kind words. So, yes, it's, uh, it's been a long journey. A uh, lot of ups and downs, more downs than ups. But ultimately, it's been a very satisfying journey because we achieved something very dear to us. Every time I've been now associated with cricket, women's cricket, and now also because it's a common board for 47 years now. And uh, every time I'm asked a question, what is the greatest achievement that, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's my greatest achievement? I always say the greatest achievement is it, it belongs to not just me, but all the pioneers of women's cricket who started with me and laid a very solid foundation. You see, many women's sports started around the same time, early to mid 70s in India, but then they just disappeared. If women's cricket has survived this long, it's because 
the pioneers, all of us, we laid a solid foundation. Had we done badly in the international tournaments in the first few years after inception, the interest would have dwindled and women's cricket might have gone the way other, a few other women's sports did. You know, they just disappeared. Luckily for us, we did pretty well. We held our own. Uh, we, we did, as you rightly mentioned, the first test victory did give us uh, a solid ground. Plus the fact that uh, we performed exceptionally well, the team as such, the entire, the, the core of the Indian team, the pioneers, as I always say that, it's because of that today, women's cricket in India is where it is today. I mean, it is still a long journey. You know, it's just the halfway stage now, but it's looking good, looking rosy, and uh, God willing, BCCI willing, I'm sure uh, the Indian women's cricket can scale greater heights and uh, become a very popular sport. It already is to a, some extent, but it could be, it will become a greater uh, spectators uh, oriented sport. Provided we plan and work according to that. I'm, uh, in fact, uh, in 79, we organized a tour. We went to England, Netherlands. From there, we went to West Indies, played a few games. From there, came to USA. Mira, much before you landed there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we played against the men there, mostly the expats. Uh, you know, Indians, Pakistanis, Britishers, Aussies, things like that. But then uh, things have changed now. I've learned through uh, uh, my former teammates, Jyotsna and uh, Jyotsna Patel and Rajeshwari that uh, women's cricket is now on its way up. I know the miles to go before you, you sleep, but there is a beginning. Yes. Uh, I know, let me tell you my own experience here. People, when we started playing, were very skeptical, skeptical about women's cricket. I'm talking of the, of 1973. But we just didn't bother. Let, you know, uh, if you give, Rajeshwari, a chance to speak. She'll uh, give you uh, uh, a book bigger than Bhagavad Gita, being her chronicles. She's chronicled everything. We spent our own money. We put up with a lot of hardships, but that never became the focus because we were more involved in playing, in ensuring that the longevity of the game is ensured. In the sense, it was a very spirited thing. So I'm sure USA, cricket per se, is, is an alien game there. I mean, the local, the, your game will uh, prosper only when the locals there take to the game. And now that with T20 being a big hit across the cricketing world, I'm sure that form may be more acceptable to people uh, in USA since they play baseball, seven, nine innings, things like that. So I'm sure, uh, you know, a four hour game could catch the imagination of the locals there. Your, uh, your objective will be fulfilled only when the local population, they take to the game and they, they, they promote it. I'm, um, no, I don't want you to, people to think I'm preaching. I'm just quoting by, you know, what our experience was when we started. People were very spectacular, uh, very skeptical. And uh, 
fortunately, we didn't make a spectacle of ourselves because we performed. And that, 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 that by itself, a lot of wagging tongues stopped. People started to accept us. And later on, they started to promote, to support. So our support base started increasing the minute we started performing. So I would like to take this opportunity to all of you, um, Ira, Hassan, and Ragun, and then all, all those connected with this for giving us a chance to talk to you guys. I'm not a good orator. I would rather prefer a, a question and answer series. So uh, as if people have questions, I'd love to answer it. All the best in your efforts to promote the game. And uh, God willing, we'll see uh, America participating, USA participating in uh, world cricketing events in the not too distant future. Thank you. Shanta, thank you so much for that insightful uh, talk you had. And absolutely, I think, you know, it starts from the local people and we all have to join hands together and we have to do it. And you being the legend and being the first person for this platform here in, um, for us locally, as well as for the United States, I think it's, it's a privilege to have you here talking about this and encouraging us so much. Um, now, having said that, I would also, uh, it is again my pleasure now to introduce you all to our second guest, Kalpana Venkatachar, but for me, AKA, she's Kalpi. Um, this is her journey for being a player to a legend in Indian cricket. Kalpi has represented Indian cricket team for a period of seven years and was a world record holder as the wicket keeper for the highest number of dismissals in 1993 World Cup. She has also played a whopping 200 first class matches. Hear me out guys, a total of 200 first class matches, phenomenal achievement. During her playing years, she has also been a recipient of multiple state awards. After finishing her cricketing year in 1997, Kalpi became a household name as a coach, a mentor, and also an inspirational leader. She is the current national selector and has been nominated as a coach of Indian cricket team by BCCI for the Australian tour. She was the coach for Indian under 19 girls team for the Commonwealth countries. She was the coach of the current Indian cricketer, Rajeshwari Gaikwad. Apart from coaching, she has been the voice behind Indian cricket as a commentator for Stars Sport Canada, where she covered the men's 2019 World Cup. And recently she concluded the women's T20 World Cup. Kalpi, it's again my privilege and our privilege and an honor to have you as our guest for the first ever Stumps Mic conversation. Kalpani, Kalpi, over to you for a few words, please. Mira, if you don't mind, just one. Yes. You lift off the main thing. Yeah, hey, Lama. She's currently the national selector from South Zone. She's the Indian I, team selector. Did you mention I, that? I did mention the first, that oh. was my first thing. Okay. I did mention so people who are um, my viewers, if you have not heard that, thank you again for mentioning that, Shanta. I will repeat that. Um, she, she is currently the national selector and she has been nominated as the coach of the Indian cricket team by BCCI for the Australian tour. Kalpi, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Mira. Thanks for calling me here. And it's uh, really a privilege to be here. Um, I'm not a big, big speaker or anything like that. I was always behind the stumps. You know, now the Shanta has given me little chance to speak. Okay, <laughs> Otherwise, it's always one side. I was always behind the stumps. I was very quiet. So I'm not a big... Uh, orator or I can talk well or anything like that. It's uh, really an honor to be here. And uh, I, I wish everybody a happy Diwali. And also I wish your uh, 
Hoysala Cricket Association all the best for the future tours and whatever the this one you are going to get into the future venture. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Kalpi. That was um, very well said. And we uh, well wishers like all of you. I think it'll make us a great success and we need backbones like all of you to help us achieve um, our goals. Uh, Raghu is with me here in this uh, panel. He will also be our moderator today. And I would like now to give it to Raghu. Raghu, over to you, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ashwin. Thank you, Mira. Hello, everyone. This is Raghu here. Uh, first of all, thank you all for being on our show. Uh, before I go on and introduce our uh, panelists, I want to once again welcome our esteemed guest speakers today, uh, Rajan, Shanta, and Kalpana. So our talk show, it's again a great honor to have you both as our guests. So thank you for being a part of our first ever Stump Mic conversation. Um, uh, we have with us a, group, a great group of panelists as well who have been very influential over the last so many years in helping promote and develop cricket across USA. Some of them have served in the capacity of as a coach, a mentor, administrator, and as well as a club founder. Uh, with the, so without ado, I want to introduce you all. Uh, our first panelist, Mr. Jatin Patel. Uh, Mr. Patel's name has been synonymous with everything related to cricket and youth development in US over the last decade or so. He has been a multi-sport coach and an administrator where he has taken on multiple roles across the board and championed various initiatives, including coaching and umpiring programs for USA Cricket. Most importantly, he has selflessly and single-handedly educated and mentored so many cricket coaches like myself, Vijesh, inclu and including PE teachers across USA to promote the game and youth development. Recently, he got the de deserved recognition and was inducted into the USA Cricket Hall of Fame. Uh, Jatin, welcome and thank you for being on our show. Would you like to please say a few words? Okay. Jatin, can you hear me? He may, be, he may be muted. Yeah, thank you all. Nice introduction, Raghu. Nice to see everybody together, even under Corona. So let's just stick with this woman cricket and uh, love to see and hear uh, further conversation. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Atin. Welcome again. Welcome. Um, I want to introduce our next panelist. Uh, that is Mr. Atul Rai. Atul has been a former president of USACA and under his leadership, USA Cricket saw the highest of heights. He championed youth development by introducing the first ever under-19 national championship. And under his tenure, USA men's team got international recognition as they participated in the Champions Trophy. Ms. Ratul is a dentist by profession and over the years have held various executive roles, including as the chair of cricket committee and chair of governing council for minor league. Currently is an executive at Southern California Cricket Association. Mr. Atul, welcome and thank you for being on our show. Would you like to please say a few words? Thank you, Raghu. Uh, welcome and uh, good morning to all. I was trying to say something when Shanta was asking me a question. I couldn't say anything because I was muted. Uh, so I wanted to say hello to all of you. Uh, Vijesh, for having me. I see Dilip. I see, uh, first of all, uh, you know, nice to see you, Shanta. I met a friend of yours yesterday. Ambi Harsha, who has been, uh, was a commentator in Chennai. It was so coincidental and I mentioned to him, he was so surprised. So anyway, nice to see you and nice to see Kalpana and uh, all of you pioneers of Indian women's cricket. So also I want to say hello to uh, some of the other guys on this call. Uh, Jatin, uh, he's here and uh, nice to see you Jatin and nice to hear from you. Uh, and I see Nadia. Of course, Nadia, as you guys know, she's on the board of US Cricket as uh, chair of the Women's Committee. Does a lot of things silently, works very hard. Um, you know, I, I, unbelievable uh, individual, to be honest. And uh, uh, I see Ajit there also on, the, on this screen. 
uh, from the board. Uh, and I haven't met Priyadarshan, but I see him. Uh, hello to you and uh, Dilip. Hello to you again. <laughs> Spoke. Anyway, um, uh, and Rajeshwari, uh, we haven't met, and uh, but I think I've spoken to Jotsna uh, previously. Um, it has been a journey for me as well, uh, Shanta, in this US cricket. Uh, you guys uh, very rightly mentioned about the you know Americans taking to the sport, but it is funny you mentioned that because in the US, uh, the current or the second generation of you know expat kids that they play. There's a lot of enthusiasm. There's a lot of uh, initiative that happen. You know, the parents, uh, expat parents, that actually have taken the they've taken their resources and their time and energy in developing cricket. It's it's phenomenal, and uh, you will be surprised to see the amount of cricket there is actually. But it requires a certain amount of structure, some planning, some execution, some support. So all of that is, I think, is in the foundational plan that U.S. cricket is trying to. And well, uh, you know, and uh, we'll talk about the strategic objectives of U.S. cricket and all of that. But you know, sort of, they, they actually came up with five uh, strategic objectives uh, not too long ago. The Boston Consulting Group helped us, uh, as you remember, with uh, Rohan Sajde, uh, the phenomenal people. Actually, we, we sat in the room in uh, uh, New York and uh, talked about all those things. So, for me, uh, talking about myself, I think. Uh, Coming from the 90s uh, in the US cricket, uh, became the president in 2001, I believe. And uh, you were, you'd be surprised to hear that we didn't even have 15 under 19 kids at that time, uh, you know, to send to a, a game in Bermuda. So we had to kind of scramble and find, uh, you know, a team. But uh, then, of course, within two years' time, we developed an under 19 national championship. We, we came up with the, I actually wrote a five year plan for US at that time. And slowly and slowly, you know, it's, it's come up a lot. And, you know, um, U.S. cricket has come a long ways, I think. We have, you know, we're probably larger in cricket than New Zealand. Uh, you'd be surprised to know. The number of players, yes. And uh, uh, ICC estimates about, I think, between 25 and 30 million uh, fans in the U.S. In fact, in the uh, Melbourne World Cup finals, U.S.A. had the largest audience. Uh, in you know, and so so we have a lot of people who are actually supporting the game in the U.S., and that is why the world's attention is on the U.S. And I think we, we always keep shooting ourselves in the foot. So hopefully this time we are taking the right step forward, and I'm very confident we'll do it do it right this time. And we have a lot of good people around, you know. So very confident we'll do it. And uh, so I'm happy to be here and happy to answer any questions. And I'm nice to see all of you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Patul. Thanks once again. Welcome to our show. Welcome. Um, our next panelist is Mr. Ajit Bhaskar. Uh, Mr. Bhaskar is currently serving as one of the board of directors for USA Cricket, and under his term, USA men's team have achieved ODI status, which is a phenomenal achievement. Uh, he's also he's also the chair of the USA Cricket Strategy Committee, responsible for overall strategy and direction of USA Cricket. He's also the president of New York Tennis Ball Cricket. League and Kanada Kuta, New York. Over the years, Bhaskar has worked tirelessly to acquire necessary infrastructure to develop the game in New York region and champion youth development by conducting multiple coaching camps for kids across the region. So, Jit, welcome and thank you for being on our show. Would you kindly please say a few words? Yeah, thanks, uh, Prabhu and uh, Vijay for the opportunity. First of all, uh, good morning and good evening for all the audience. Uh, before I go, happy Diwali to all the people who are celebrating currently. And um, yeah, 2020 been a really tough year for everyone. It's a crisis year. I think still, I see quite a lot of cricket going on and people are really passionate. And um, I, I tell you, it's been, uh, and uh, the guests are also great today. Today, because, um, uh, I think it's been an honor and privilege to be here and seeing all the stats which uh, the women's cricket has done in that uh, year is awesome and amazing. Like um, 1976, West Indies beating a West Indies is uh, nothing less than winning a World Cup, I would say. It's, it's a great um, honor, I would say, once again. And uh, coming back to USA cricket, uh, uh, it's, uh, I tell you, like... Uh, I think it's the same thing what women's cricket faced in their time. We are in the early stage. We also need recognition now. And uh, I think we are working hard. 
as you said it's very important i think until unless the local people accept the sports sports cannot grow and i think it's a very valid point and as uh, atul mentioned um, we have the people who follow the cricket a uh, 20 million people is nothing less right it's uh, more than any uh, one of the countries i would say a great fan following and i think that's what icc found that uh, saying that yes the people are watching it uh, where are the product that's the one thing we were missing there was no product um, uh, so there was no great uh, era national team or something so that's why 2018 is an historic so the new board form um, new steps has been taken i think we are in the right direction we are going with the right uh, team uh, means uh, so what happens is in a country you need a certain ingredient to make any sport success like uh, a proper resource and uh, infrastructure and the fan following right so we do have uh, resources we need to develop talented kids youth who accept this uh, game here and um, and i think that's why we need right coaches like jatin patel and other people so get those people in train our own kids get the international group people in the mix and blend will give a great talent and then right partner like ace or willow who is ready to invest money to build the stadiums infrastructure so we got that also on board now what is that fan following who are always already there once we have a local heroes they will come on board so i think usa cricket is on board with a great strategy which we put recently which puts us as a permanent member the great uh, ambition is to get uh, a, um, a permanent membership in icc by 2030 so that's the goal we are working on and uh, again uh, shanda around this when we said uh, t20 is a thing which is going in future and we are working on that we know that in this country anything more than 2 3 hours people will get bored so focus is also there as well as the odi status so everything in mix and uh, again once again, it's a great honor to be with uh, all the great dignitaries once again thank you to be here thank you uh, ajit i want to say thank you for making on such a short notice really appreciate it thank you ajit ajit thank you uh, moving on i want to introduce our next panelist um that is mr dilip chawn mr chawn has been a part of uh, massachusetts state cricket league mscl over the last two decade as a player he has led his club in a high competitive division 1 to multiple championship uh, he represented recently represented india in the recently concluded over 50 world cup held in south africa as an administrator he is serving his second term as the president of massachusetts state cricket league under his fearless leadership MSL conducted the first ever youth tournament in 2019 which he transformed into youth league he championed for women's cricket by conducting the first ever women's tournament by working with former national and international cricketers like Krithika and Mia yourself personally for me he has been a great friend and a mentor so it's my privilege to welcome him to our talk show uh, dilip would you please say a few words Dilip, can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, sorry, I was I was trying to unmute uh, my speaker, but uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Raghu, Mira. Uh, good to see you. Happy Diwali to all of you and uh, Hoysala for conducting this event. Uh, this is awesome. This is what we were actually looking for. We did a couple of things which we are proud of uh, proud of it but we wanted to achieve more and we want to get into the next level i was talking to vijesh the other day about uh, our next uh, years plan for for youth cricket and uh, also i talked to uh, we we spoke about the women's plan with uh, kritika about the next year when we are going to conduct the next next tournament and uh, uh, by no matter what we, we we saw what the level of cricket with the women can play uh, in our first tournament uh, the final was like a nail biting so there is a, there is a lot of crowd which was watching at the, that uh, that game and they were very very well they are very excited about all uh, about the cricket in massachusetts we we actually try to give more exposure because men's cricket is doing we are actually 100 year old come um, league so we are doing doing good and uh, 
with the new um, uh, that USA cricket, a minor league has started. So we are bringing a lot of like a new talents also in uh, in that uh, in the in the cricket cricketing world. But but we don't want it to basically ignore. And also, we wanted to boost this the, the the cricket in in US. And I think this is the the best way to basically bring the youth uh, uh, training, like Raghu and all those guys are doing it, and also give them an opportunity to play cricket. So that is we are actually going to focus on that. How to give them more game, more competition, so that they can basically go to the higher level than what what they are now. Same thing we were trying to do the, uh, do it for for women's too. Uh, thanks to Kritika and Mira, you so like means we we hosted that tournament, which was com- you know, very well uh, organized, and looking forward to do a couple more in that. And I would like to basically with these two uh, women, um, which we are going to talk today, uh, we'd like to basically discuss with them like uh, how we can bring it to the next level. So that is that is going to be my questions to uh, to them. Um, and uh, we would like to hear from them about, about that. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dilip. Appreciate thank you, Dilip. Uh, our final panelist, uh, panelist today is Mr. Priyadarshan Tumko. Uh, Darshan is a proud founder of New England Cricket Club, NECC, which is one of the biggest cricket clubs in New England, comprising of more than 150 members. He's a veteran of Massachusetts State Cricket League, where he has led his beloved NECC Hawks team to multiple championships over the years. As an administrator, he has served in an MSCL executive committee for multiple years and championed for youth development in New England region. It is an understatement to say that he was instrumental in getting the MSCL under-18 team to represent in the NYCL national tournament year in the year 2019. Personally, Darshan has been a great friend, a mentor, and someone I looked up over uh, for the last decade. He's always volunteered by providing help in any way possible to promote and develop the game. So it is my privilege to welcome him for our talk show today. Darshan, would you please say a few words? Thank you, Raghu. <laughs> Thank you all. And uh, good morning, good evening, and uh, happy Diwali. One thing I want to say is that, Shanta, when I was growing up, I used to read about you in the paper <laughs> a lot, but I didn't know that I'm going to meet you in person. It's a great honor. In this uh, as I think we have our own national cricket architects, international players, and um, our local, you know, Massachusetts level president, everybody. So we have all, all the four of us said we have all, all the representatives. So thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, uh, Raghu and uh, Yesh, and the voice of our cricket. So just want to let you know, Raghu. The team which we put in NYCL could not have been done without you being the coach. Thank you. Raghu volunteered and uh, he coached them. They didn't play a single game before they went to the the tournament because they didn't have an opportunity. All we did was practice, practice, practice. And uh, Vijesh. Vijesh was also instrumental. And uh, I can say... He spent a lot of time, you know, getting these people together, running coaching sessions and all those things. Just want to share one beautiful thing that happened in the tournament. On the first game, when we went there, me and Raghu were standing and the kids, nobody was confident even to go play there because they never played a comp- competitive cricket. Then Raghu took them to the side and gave them some kind of, a, you know, a, a wording, a, a pep talk. And the first person volunteered to go for opening batting. I don't know what he did, but he did he did change the entire game and he changed the entire tournament for the kids. And they fared very well then. We are also surprised. We are amazed at the talent we have locally. Until then, we knew these people play, we could see the stroke, but then the temperament, the things, and we are, we are amazed of that. So yeah, I mean uh, it's a long journey when this was just a start and uh, basically we are looking for uh, more tournaments like this and yes uh, it was a great experience for us the very competitive cricket right uh, in Massachusetts it was uh, 2005 there were only 10 teams 
by 2010, we had like 20 teams. And uh, by 2015, that's when the burst happened. There were like 30 teams and now we have 55 teams. It was such a huge burst of people, I mean, adults. And now there are uh, kids also. There are so many kids who want to play. Right now, uh, Raghu does his part. I do my part. Vijay does his part. But then there's so many people who want to be a part of this that we are not able to even, you know, it is a burst of adult cricket, youth cricket, and now now we have uh, women's cricket. It's a huge growth here, and um, New England is, is a big potential place. And there's no other sports in the whole of USA. It doesn't have a New England in the playoffs. So keep over for a good conversation. See how, how we can build it further. Thank you. Thank you, Darshan. Thank you for the kind words. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Darshan. Uh, uh, before we move on to discuss and debate various topics that are uh, influencing the game of uh, cricket today, I want to give a quick shout out to our former national and international women cricketers that we have with us today, um, Kritika, Rajeshwari and Josna, and Sujata and Sujata Sridhar. Welcome and thank you all for being on our talk show. We will definitely uh, pull you in for your insights uh, during the uh, later part of the show. Also, we want to welcome the current USA Women Cricket Player Board Member and USA Player Nadia Grini. Welcome, Nadia, and thank you for being on our talk show. Uh, as I mentioned, probably later, in the later part of the show, uh, uh, you will we will pull you in for insights regarding women's cricket. Where is it with respect to current uh, current situation, and uh, what is the future plan for women's cricket in USA as well? Uh, so, thank you again. Also. Importantly, this event couldn't have been possible without the tireless effort from the members of the club. Uh, so a big shout out to Tejasvi, Ashwin, Mithila, and Mamta. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for making this a huge success. Thanks a lot. Uh, passing on to you, Meera, so we can start the discussions with uh, uh, when we're going to ask a series of questions to Shanta and Kalpana, and we'll bring in panelists to have the insights as well. So. I think uh, one name you forgot to mention. Uh, I, I was just browsing through to see who all the, the participants. Mm -hmm. um, besides Suji and uh, Josna, I also saw Supriya Desai. Uh, she used to play here in Bangalore. She is now settled. I, I saw her. And uh, I, there's also one more cricketer who's currently the chairman of the Kanadka women's cricket, uh, Karnataka State women's team. I saw Jayshree of Bangalore also online. Oh, so she's <laughs> excellent. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Chandra. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for mentioning that. Yes. Our apologies. We do welcome uh, Jayshree as well as uh, Supriya. Supriya. Welcome. Samira, you want to start the discussion with uh, a series of questions that we have. Absolutely. Now we are going to do a very interesting episode here. Shanta and Kalpi, what better topic to start the discussion rather than just knowing about the inspiration behind your success and the challenges that you have faced during your time? So let me first begin with Shanta. Shanta, what and who inspired you to get into the game, which was kind of dominated by the men? I grew up in a joint family in Bangalore where, you know, we were uh, in, in our compound, we were about 20 cousins, boys, girls. We, we uh, younger days, we used to play tennis, ball, cricket at home on weekends. The prize would be a pencil or an eraser, something like that. And uh, all the friends of these 20 would join us. So invariably, uh, that's how it started. And then, uh, but then we had to wait for long years before uh, we could formally start playing uh, cricket because the Women's Cricket Association of India was formed in 1973. So till such time, uh, uh, I was in other sports. I was the state badminton player. I was a captain of the state softball team, which I you know I was the national best all rounder, but then ultimately the minute cricket started, I, uh, I, I I just had to give up the other games because this was a full-time uh, 
job in the sense um, uh, it needed a lot of efforts to be put in and and um, that that's the way i started and i think uh, meera it will be better you if you ask uh, kalpana first she initially had a grouse that i talk too much and she doesn't get a chance so i think <laughs> uh, i i can no 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 i have absolutely no problem about that you can ask her only <laughs> I can assure all the things are covered. I can assure both of you that you will get equal opportunity here. <laughs> no, so not an issue. Even it's ninety ten is okay with me. <laughs> not an issue. <laughs> I I I was just going a uh, segue towards you, Kalpana and uh, Kalpi. You, what are your thoughts? Can you please share some? See, basically. Uh, i have i have three brothers so brothers they always used to play cricket that's how i uh, got into cricket but of course when uh, i think india west indies women played here in uh, chinna swami stadium i was selling score cards some i think i was in the mid wicket pavilion or something i was selling score cards for the indian team so that's how and i saw shanta hitting a six and so many girls playing i saw shobha pandit and everybody even diana eduji so i got inspired i said okay when they announce the state nets or state practice let me join and that's how i got inspiration mainly it's because of my brothers wow yeah it starts from within they say right so i think it's so apt that when we see all our siblings and uh, our friends playing and we also get inspired thanks kalpi that was very uh, insightful now kalpi since shanta has told me very specifically about giving you the opportunity i'm going to start with you with the next question okay so um how would you see or uh, the then hardships of playing cricket to now or rather let me put it this way what were the hardships that you face including lack of cricket ground cricket kits and most importantly and difficult convincing our parents those days who had who played you know, when we played right when we played compared to the players now so what are your thoughts on that actually um, to be honest with you when i started playing i never had any problems from the, Um, from my parents or friends or anybody like that it was they were always very broad minded they allowed me to play go practice everything yeah practice facility fac facilities wise now it's 1000 times much better um i think suji suji can uh, also join me on this because we used to practice at central college on uh, volleyball volleyball grounds basketball grounds and things like that compared to that now it's much 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 better you can say uh, for us national ground national fields was lots where lot of pebbles mats and things like that so in that we used to practice uh, i don't think anything like that like it was better then or now it's nothing like that those days what best we could do i think we have done it now the opportunities are there that's fair enough yeah i have nothing like that to pinpoint and say anything yes the hardships were there but traveling in unreserved and things like that, all that now the positive thing is the game which i played it has reached this level that that makes me very happy so the hardship everything is it's forgotten absolutely very rightly said i think the passion and the love what we have for the game overlooks everything what we do right true yeah that's right shanta can i have your thoughts on this please i yeah um as Kal uh, kalpana rightly pointed it out uh, the odds were stacked against us you know when we started but then uh, um, you see as as mira as you rightly said the passion yeah. the overriding factor was the passion for the game and uh, that ensured that all these things 
receded into the background. The skepticism, the criticism, you know, these, this really didn't matter. I, I am positive uh, uh, initially, or maybe for other couple of uh, decades, USA cricket will have to undergo this too, in the sense, till it is firmly established and get becomes deep rooted, we will uh, we'll have to face certain things like this. But what is gratifying mm -hmm. is the fact that our efforts did not go in vain. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, as I said it initially also, we have ensured the longevity of the game and no, nothing better than this satisfaction because this is the ultimate thing because we know we were part of history that laid a solid foundation for women's cricket in India. And I think that is the biggest um, achievement, biggest contribution, both from the pioneers of the game. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shanta. I think you uh, you hit the nail on the head, you know, the pioneers. I think that the root is where we have to uh, give credit to and absolutely um, thank you so much uh, Shanta and Kalpi for that. I would like to now move a little bit over to the panelists and um, I would like to uh, bring over uh, Mr. Jatin. Jatin, staying on the same topic of hardship, you know, I want to bring in your, uh, your thoughts and can you please relate some of the things that was mentioned with respect to when you started coaching these sessions through ACF. Now, what were your challenges and how did you overcome them? Mr. Jatin, are you there, sir? Uh, Mr. Jatin Patel, I think you are on, we'll, we will unmute you in a second, I apologize. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the hardship is always there. And uh, many knows, and even Atul knows how we sent that first World Cup under 19 team in 2019, building from scratch. Uh, over the last 12 years, I have done a lot. Not for the awards or position. It just, I love to train more coaches. And I'm involved in more than 40 projects right now in the US, like Boston, Minnesota, uh, Southern California, St. Louis. I can name it, plenty of them. The biggest thing we need is the coaches. Mm -hmm. Like we have half dozen women coaches here who I have trained, mentor. Take it the other way. I will not say I develop them. Like Josna and uh, this Rajeshwari and plenty of other Kurutika is there. I was in Boston and I see how these ladies are interested in coaching. And what we need is simply, we need to train more coaches on women's side. And that is the only reason from last 12 years, while we are on topic, I will say, I have done it at no cost. All my events in 12 years, it's 100% free to women and PE teachers, period. It's like a, you're trying to build a fancy school and you have plenty of students without teacher. You're going nowhere. I'm coming from more from the US soccer. I better say I'm soccer coach than cricket. The way we feel the coaches makes the difference. Just like a school in a small towns in India, rural areas, they don't need the fancy schools and the students. They can find a good teacher who can start teaching under the tree or something. This is what exactly US faces the problem. It's not about the facilities and the support. We need the people who love to do the job and start the projects. And that's what I succeed. And uh, to me, I always feel I'm thankful to God as I'm passing my knowledge and the people appreciate me. That's a huge thing. And I always say my coaches, look for the players first. We are all about building a character. 
And believe me, USA is a huge task. We are looking at 106,000 schools and colleges. It is absolutely impossible for a handful of people or few people wants to control or try to develop this thing. No, we're gonna need a plenty of force all over the US. The biggest challenge we have is, I will not speak too much about it. We need to find the quality people who are already doing it rather than finding people who wants to do it. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different side. The people who is interested to do, it's basically looking for some opportunity. Where the people who are doing it are the best people you want to find. Mm -hmm. Look at just one Boston example. I've been there for like twice. Look where we are in terms of the youth, women cricket. The biggest thing is, is not about we do at the national level. At the local level, it takes a lot of effort in terms of the motivation and inspiration for the coaches and players. The biggest challenge I can tell you to sustain the program, we must have the local capabilities in terms of coaches. You can't rely on outside coaches who can just frequently come or randomly comes and do something and go away your program gonna fall off. The another huge challenge is you cannot keep these coaches at the same level where they started. Okay. When yeah. the players start developing, you must have the coaching capabilities to take them to the next level. So it's a continuation process where we need the highly interested people who really love to do it. It's the biggest challenge is the funding yeah. and the support. And I will say few of my programs, especially Pittsburgh, Minnesota, I still rank them Boston as a top because you have a very good team out there, not just coaches. Well, like we did this coaching cap in April and I see the tournament launch in matter of six months and building a two team in Boston without much external support. That's a huge, we need to believe in ourselves. That's the biggest thing. We must work as a team at the local level. Number three is the most important, how to sustain the program. When the kids come to you to learn, no doubt they all talk these general terms like a fun, excitement, all those stuff. We are the guiding people, keep them interested in the sport. And when you do that, it goes there. Every kid wants to play. It's a matter of time, how the coaches turn them into a really competitive situation. Yes, funding is the issue. Support is the issue. But hey, when you're doing at the local level, I always believe there are some people out there who can put own money. As we hear these two legend ladies from India, is not about money. They put their own money. To me, our biggest challenge in US right now, the way I see in last 12 years, beyond pay teachers, people need to contribute the time. Anyone can spend money. Anyone can support you. The biggest challenge is putting the time in a program and keeping the kids actively involved and bring the teams up. On the woman's side, we have the best opportunity. As I said, I'm more of a soccer coach. Look at the woman's soccer. When we started in 1993, soccer was more worse than cricket right now, let me tell you. <clears throat> but when they started the school soccer, they did not rely on national governing body or what the FIFA does. The first thing they did is the blanket. All over the US, they started coaching. Even today, we have up to level two at no cost to anybody. Opportunity to become coach, you can go to the local league and just ask somebody, you want to become coach? Guess what? You'll be in coach within short time rather than you rely on 
some program coming from national body or something. My point is, the coaches can make the huge difference at the same time, the officials make the difference. And with these two component, we definitely have a really good board in place right now. It's a matter of time where they all click together and do the action plan. We have laid out very good uh, plan by the board for the future. We just need to be patient. But I will say, do not limit yourself. If you are a coach, spread your knowledge. That is what we are lacking. There are lots of parents are coming in the game because their loved ones are playing. We need to turn them into some sort of contributor, not just financial contributor. We need their help other ways to keep up these programs. The biggest thing, the way I watch, I am a heavily follower of Mithali Raj, let me tell you, before I used to read and uh, things about in uh, college days about Sandaranga Swami and those old ladies, I can tell you, this today's ladies, we looking at modern world, where these ladies are getting more education. They are behind fitness too. Right now, frankly speaking, watching women cricket is more exciting than the men's game. We seen in Boston, I was with the women guys, <laughs> and I see that final, how exciting was there. Thank you so much, Mr. Patel. It the last so thing I will say, we need a more women coaches. And that is the region I reach out this Josna and I have like uh, Dipali. Uh, there's a plenty of coaches here, Kiritika, Mithali. You know what? The best coaches in the world is your mother. If you think yourself, what the mother did to you. I don't care what level of coaching you have. Your mother has every possible component out there to be a good coach. Think about it. She didn't teach you cricket because she did not play. Let's take it this way. But for you ladies, you have opportunity to learn this game and deliver to the kids. And that is the beauty I'm looking in US cricket. You have more women coaches who can make a difference. Once we do that, the women team will fly. That's 100%. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Patel. It was so inspiring. I think you just rounded it so beautifully with collaboration, motivation, passion, quantity versus quality, developing coaching, and, you know, the most important is sustain and continuation. I think all of these are something which all of us are looking forward to. Um, now, having, thank you so much. Uh, I would also uh, now I'd like to give it to Raghu because we are going to move over to the next question because our legends, now be ready. We are here <laughs> to ask you the next question. Thank you, Mr. Jatin. Thank you, Jatin. Thank you, Mira. Uh, the next topic is uh, something which is very close to me, which is regarding the uh, emergence and uh, successfulness of women's cricket in, in India over the last 10 years. So this is a question for both of our speakers, Shanta and Kalpana. Uh, you, you're aware, women's cricket in India has seen a phenomenal rise in the last 15 years or so, and you both have been integral part of that success. Could you please enlighten us regarding how was this made possible in such a short duration of time? Uh, Shanta, would you like to go first, please? I think uh, 47 years is short. I wouldn't say so. I think uh, it's been a grueling uh, period. Uh, it's taken a lot of time, a lot of pain, a lot of efforts, a uh, lot of money. Uh, even today, Rajeshwari Dolokya, Anthony keeps scribbling about the money she has spent you know, for playing cricket because we used to shell out from our own pockets those days. I'm sure many of you are doing it now, uh, uh, sponsoring it and things like that. So. I mean, um, it's taken a lot of efforts, not just from us, uh, but from our parents, a lot of well-wishers who have contributed for the game. And um, um, ultimately, I told you, know, I, I, just to cut it short, uh, 
what the end matters. And I think all the efforts that we put in has culminated in something very fruitful, which is our uh, game has now acquired a stature that is befitting of the foundation we laid. And I think um, I sleep very peacefully with this knowledge that we have all, we have all contributed. I see Jyotsna, Suji there, uh, Rajeshwari, Supriya. And I just saw Anju Malik. She's also there. She's played for North Zone. I, I was just going through the messages. Uh, in the mid 80s, she's played against me playing for North Zone. Um, so basically, uh, um, everyone, all of us have contributed. And um, I'm positive. You see, just the players ourselves wouldn't have been possible. We needed people. Like now you have uh, Vijesh, Hassan, Raghu, Meera, Jatin Patel, uh, Rai, Priyadarshan, Tumku. Oh, God, uh, my memory is pretty good. I caught on to all the names that are very past me. Uh, so um, what I'm saying is it, it's a teamwork. You know, people who play on the field, people who back them, people who support them. And um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Jatin Patel, uh, we're not free for the next two years to come and join there as coaches. But ultimately, anyway, coaching is, is no more my cup of tea. It's now uh, Kalpana is, is a pretty good coach. He's produced quite a few state players. In fact, uh, Rajeshwari Gaikwad, uh, the India left arm spinner, is her product. I'm sure uh, she can address the issue of coaching. I see Suji hiding there. Whenever you mention recruitment of coach, She's uh, switching off her camera there. So, <laughs> not many uh, uh, family circumstances also will not permit many to uh, give the time like Raju is giving. Rajeshwari is coaching a lot of boys in Houston. Um, uh, Kalpana is doing for girls here. Um, and basically, it's for free. It's the passion that drives them, that motivates them. So, um, um, uh, as the, I, I even forgot the question you asked, how did we reach here? Yeah, uh, you know, it's not a short while. It's, it's been a long time, but uh, um, as one of uh, the astronauts uh, phrased it, when he reportedly stepped on the moon, uh, a small step for a man, but a giant leap for mankind. Absolutely. Likewise, you know, what, what we did, was pretty small, but then the game benefited. So I would say it was a our small steps were a big leap for women's cricket. Absolutely. Kalpana is waiting. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Uh, Kalpana, your thoughts, please. Yeah, I mean, everything she has blabbered, and <laughs> she's asking me to get. No, actually, it's uh, basically uh, hard work. There is absolutely no replacement for that. Even you take, for example, coaching or even administration, everything, you need some donkeys. So I think uh, I have done that job, maybe 10% or 15% donkeys job. But it's really uh, the culture, what we are going to develop in the kids. That's the most important. That's what I feel. That, that's how I have trained a uh, lot of girls. And I also, I strongly feel about that also. The culture, basically the culture, the playing culture, the discipline, and of course the administrative administration part also, a lot of efforts are needed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you so much, Kalpana. Thank you. Uh, staying on the same topic, I just want to bring in uh, two of our panelists, uh, Atul and Ajit. Uh, first, Atul, do you guys think we can achieve the same kind of growth in both men and women's cricket here in USA by, by following in some of the footsteps that was uh, laid down uh, to help both men and women cricket in India to grow and become such a phenomenon. Raghu, if you don't mind, can I button uh, just before they start their replies? Sure. Um, I was reading, you know, uh, and I saw there are quite a few rival associations in USA. You know, 
uh, one competing against the other. It, it happened uh, in India those days. We had uh, multiple associations. And so, you know, players played in all wrong places. And it, uh, unless we all work, it's a joint effort, one concerted effort that, uh, that will yield the fruits. Because I know uh, all of them, are Ajit, Atul, Priyadarshan, Jatin, all, all of you are uh, you, you, Vijay Shasan. You, you want to uh, do something for the game, that, that, that satisfaction of giving. But we have to carry the, the whole people with us. We, we should not be working at cross purposes. I'm sorry if I sounded presumptuous, but um, once I read that, I thought, you know, it's very important that all of us move in one direction together. Absolutely. Yeah, united we stand, divided we fall. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that insight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, yeah. with that, I, uh, I, I think, uh, Shanta, uh, those things did happen uh, some years ago. and uh, But fortunately, uh, that's in our past. Uh, well, it was for a good reason. And I don't... Uh, belittle any of those efforts or uh, people what stood for certain things and and um, it, and cricket was at crossroads at that point and so there was a need for people to bear arms and fight for certain reasons and so ICC at that point stepped in and uh, got the new US cricket form and that was uh, two years ago. And uh, rightly so. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was part of USACA and I was the president of USACA at one time. Uh, so it hurt me to think that there were two different organizations because I had to choose one over the other. And uh, but those are all in the past. And fortunately, today, our goal is no longer how do we uh, bridge the two of our goal is to bring everyone on board and increase participation you know, for an opportunity for kids to play and <clears throat> to uh, to talk about the uh, the opportunities for men, uh, boys and girls that uh, Raghu is asking me. Um, and interestingly, as uh, Jatin, the coach, uh, phenomenal coach Jatin was talking about, you know, it is no coincidence that, uh, you know, so many parents have to step in and do these things, right? The resources, and I always say this, you know, uh, if you look at what US cricket spent in 2019, or the budget, right, it was over $4 million, you know, and for an associate member uh, that gets 1.2 million from the ICC to spend over 4 million is not a joke. And when we spend that kind of money, we believe that, okay, we must be doing something big, but they don't realize that USA is a huge country, you know, and to get all of those uh, people playing, putting all the resources together, we need over hundred million dollars. And I think in 2002, I remember Malcolm Speed who was a CEO at that time, asked me a question, you know, how much money do you need to run USA cricket? I said, uh, 10 times that of what you give to each uh, European country, because you, the USA was 10 times the size of, is of Europe. So, and so that's how it is, right? The resources are the amount of people that are playing the game. We need, if that's the reason why I believe in what Jatin was just saying, that you can't uh, reproduce those efforts by paying money. People who spend their time and effort at you know every weekend, people like Raghu or Priyadarshan or Dilip or you know everyone that is doing this, it's not something that you can buy. You can put money into that. So we just definitely need to motivate these people and keep them occupied. Find the talent, give keep them engaged, get them going. Uh, so the community-based programs is what we really need to put our efforts on. So increased participation is one of the strategic pillars of USA Cricket. Uh, I don't believe that we can do this just by spending money or bringing in coaches from elsewhere. We need to find the local talent, local people, encourage them, give them resources, empower them, and get them to actually coach more kids. 
And what's, what's the other part of it? Okay, now the kids are playing cricket. And what I've seen over the years, and this is what my biggest beef is with US cricket, and I've always said this to the CEO, that when kids play cricket, like I play, I, you know, my kids started playing cricket uh, and my son was playing. And after a while he told me that no one else is playing cricket in the, when I go to the next class. So why am I playing cricket? You know, so we need to continue to bridge that gap. So where is the cricket in uh, high school and colleges? And so that's the next step for you as a cricket. You know, you as a cricket need to continue to bridge that gap because once kids start playing at under 15, under 13, under 15, under 17, under 19 levels, what happens when they go to the next level? Mm -hmm. there, isn't, there isn't a bridge. You know, we need to continue to bridge that gap because mm -hmm. we don't. You lose all those people those kids who were passionate, who took up the sport and then they continued to play the game. Women's cricket today has 150 to 250 kids. Nadia is on the call and she'll answer those questions better than anybody else can. And we've been fighting and she has been fighting, the champion for women's cricket, to be honest. And so there isn't much that has happened in the last few, couple, few years for women's cricket. And we need to, and I will tell you this, that in the US, if some, if cricket has to grow, it is to go through women's cricket. Because just like what uh, Jatin was saying about AYSO, you know, when my son was trying to play uh, uh, soccer, I had to become a coach. It isn't, uh, you know, they won't let you. Your children play soccer unless you actually become a coach. So where is that in cricket? And yeah. that's what I was preaching to Malcolm Speed in 2002. And that was part of my strategic plan in 2002 when I wrote the plan. So in 2020, where are we with this? So I think we need to look at the reality of this, that don't reinvent the wheel. And look at all the parents and people who are, you know, spending their time and energy and resources and try, don't bring in, you know, try to bring more money, but empower the people who are actually doing the work, bridge the gap, give the kids an opportunity. There has to be some local hero where is the Sachin Tendulkar's or the Virat Kohli's of the world in, in the US? Or Shanta Rangaswamy's or Kalpana's in the world in, in the US? Let's bring those people out. Let's have those people be playing the game and then the kids will be motivated and they will play the game, right? Otherwise, we are just trying to reinvent the wheel. And then we'll, this will happen, you know, one step forward and two steps back. That doesn't work. Anyway, so does that answer your question, Raghu? Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Atul. I just want to bring in quickly Ajit here. Ajit, we... Uh, no, the reason, uh, Raghu, I'm sorry. The reason I please. mentioned this, uh, uh, Atul Roy, is I recently got a mail, recently would mean a month back, from some executive secretary of uh, Osaka or something, U United States uh, of America Cricket Association addressed to the ICC because I'm in the BCCI Apex Council, I think the mail was marked to everyone. And that is different from the official uh, uh, USA Cricket Board. So uh, I got confused with that. If, if, if that has been resolved, nothing like it. All the, all the best. Go ahead. Thank you. I just want to bring in Ajit here. Ajit, uh, both Shanta and Atul talk about uh, Having uh, working under a single single umbrella. Right now, we have uh, that single umbrella as USA Cricket. So, do you think that uh, in we can follow and so we can use some of the things that Indian cricket has used in in the past to bring both men and women cricket uh, and have that successful growth that they had over the years? We can do the same thing in US as well. Now that we have a working under a single umbrella. Uh, yeah. Um, um... So first, first of all, thanks, Shanta. That was a great point. Uh, saying like uh, working together is the key uh, because uh, it's a starting point. At this time, if you pull things each other, it's a very fragile thing and it might break also. I think very good point. Thanks for that. So coming back to um, how do we get this to next level? So in our strategic document, we had four main focus points. Um, the one is like fans and players. Second is youth and uh, long-term plan. And the other one is the women's and girls. So we see in next uh, 10 years, the next big thing is women's cricket. So we have all the plans to make sure like we are on the right track to get 
and uh, find the right talent and uh, give the things what what is really needed and as uh, atul said um, nadia would talk more on the women's cricket and uh, uh, the plans which we have for from the usa cricket so com completely agree uh, i think uh, we we are in like uh, we are focusing and we are planning towards that and um, we will do whatever it needed to grab this opportunity and bring everything what needs the us to be on top of this to uh, succeed on women's cricket um i think that yeah i think uh, uh, <clears throat> right now like we are lacking the resources the interest people are uh, talking about who wants to join uh, cricket from women's and girls side so we have taken many steps as i said uh, as uh, very well pointed out we need to put this in a grassroots level that means put this in a school uh, as uh, jatin said like uh, pe teachers needs to be trained pe te pe teachers needs to accept the sports and they have to train the kids on the sports and that's a very very important the money we spend whatever we do if they don't accept it it will never flourish so we are working towards that and probably it will it will result uh, yield some results in future thanks for it thank you so much uh, that's thank you thanks a lot for such an insight man so thank you to atul as well as yeah, i just uh, just to supplement what uh, atul roy and ajit baskar mentioned sure some 10 years back china had a policy they realized they could never have a men's cricket team getting a medal for them in such a short span of time so they they decided they will concentrate on women's cricket so that they could get a medal but then i think uh, somewhere on route it got derailed but uh, yeah i mean uh, as atul mentioned and ajit uh, endorsed that view um, usa could do well having a, uh, uh, concentrating initially on youth cricket and women's cricket and over a period you know as the popularity widens men will men's cricket can be your priority but right now i think youth cricket and women's cricket should be your priority i agree uh, with shanta uh, you know i always say this uh, that you can't build a structure without a foundation right so we are trying to build something on the top without any foundation here so which will never succeed so and uh, when uh, shanta is talking about 47 years of hard work you know that's not no joke you know it took that long for us and in india to be where it is right so and uh, so let's not fool ourselves and so we need to really focus on the the nitty gritty which is the the sense of it just the, the grassroots and the the foundational plans thank you atul no misconception that um, um it's only after bcci took over that indian women's cricket did well now it's it's a misconception i can tell you because bcci took over the administration of women's cricket in 2006 but in 2005 under the banner of the women's cricket association of india our indian women's team were the runners up in the world cup held in uh, in 2005 in south africa and we could accomplish that feat again only in 2017 that is 11 years after bcci took over so uh, the bcci intervention or uh, involvement has definitely uh, uh, led to concentration of uh, increasing the quality at the grassroots level which is very much required i agree but um because i i had spoken of the foundation which even atul rai um, endorsed it my point is we accomplished it without much money and you know uh, uh, those days uh, before bcci to core also uh, indian women's cricket could stand on its own uh, on its own legs that's the point i wanted to make Thank you, Shanta. Uh, it's a it's a great segue now to the next section. Since we are in, uh, talking about building grassroots cricket, I want to pass on the mic to Meera uh, to to talk about one of the most uh, interesting and uh, uh, topic which is dear to me, which is youth development. Thank you, thank you, Raghu and uh, Shanta. Very greatly said. I think 
uh, like Atul and everyone on the panelists, all of you, I think it boils down to our roots and again, youth development. Um, I would like to ask a question here and it's again, Kalpi or Shanta. Um, either of you can take this. What is your idea of creating a base for the young boys and girls to start and stick to cricket, which is kind of very important because I know it, people tend to drift away, like Mr. Jatin also said. So if your insights, please. Shanta, I'll, I'll let you go first. I think this is more uh, Kalpana's. Uh, Absolutely. Kalpi? Coach. Yeah, I think initially you can go to schools and uh, just um, announce it in the assembly, pick up a few girls. Next door only, I think you can, if you have a small ground, they don't need a ground like uh, China Swami Stadium or Lodz or anything like that. Just a small place where they can learn the small skills and play some 10 over game or something. And you can always uh, spot the talent there and pick the girls from there and put them in the coaching camp and have a regular follow up. In that way, you'll be able to develop and have some inter-school matches on weekends and things like that. Mainly, you have to go to schools only. That's where you have that. And one more thing I have noticed here, maybe this is not uh, relevant to this. The locals need to play there more than expats. No, I see. In, I was coaching UAE. There also a lot of expats used to come and. Uh, play there. So after once they reach uh, 10th or 11th grade, they used to give up the game and uh, they used to go off to US for higher studies. So that shouldn't happen here. I, I'm seeing the same thing in US. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but I could sense that unless the locals play there, locals take some interest it's very difficult to develop the game there because most of the expats know they just come, uh, they play for, for some time, then they go off for, uh, for higher studies and they give up the game. So it's mainly the grassroots level. You have to go to the schools and motivate them to play. Very well said, uh, Kalpi. I think it's you know tapping on the schools and also uh, the local talent, as you rightly said. I think from, if we could tap on that, um, I think the growth will be really good. Having said that, now I would like Shanta to say a few, um, few words and you know, your thoughts, Shanta, on this. As, as Kalpana rightly pointed out, mm -hmm. cash them young, that, that should be the slogan. But then how do you generate interest? I'm sure uh, the administrators there Ajit Baska, Atul Rai, Jatin Patel, Priya Darshan, Vijayesh, Raghunan, uh, Dilip Chauhan. See, uh, you need, uh, we don't know the, uh, the situation there. My, uh, I think in this aspect, how to popularize it, how to broad base cricket in USA, I'm sure Jyotsna and Rajeshwari and Sujata who are, and Meera herself who are, uh, in, who will live there, they'll be having a better idea because you, you need to induce that interest in them, enthuse the kids. Uh, you know, how to go about it is something you'll have to draw your own route map. But my, partic my point is just this. Uh, I was a little, uh, uh, I was flabbergasted when Atul Rai mentioned uh, uh, the budget. <laughs> I mean, uh, the entire ICC proceeds should be going to USA cricket the way you said it, um, which is not practical. So uh, I think Rajesh, uh, uh, Rajeshwari has landed at the wrong place at the wrong time because here she was <laughs> at the receiving end when she was playing here. Now, if you have to start all over again, Jyotsna, Raju, you can continue writing uh, <laughs> uh, your books. Because it, it, it requires a lot of sacrifice. It requires a, a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of efforts. So, um, in, uh, you know, you have to cash them in. 
you know, inculcate that interest in them, enthuse them, keep them busy, just doing drills and things, they'll lose their interest. You have to make them play weekends, matches, things like that. That's the only way to keep their interest alive. And I'm sure uh, where there's a will, there's a way. So uh, uh, with or without money, you know, things can be achieved. You know, uh, I, I'm not just talking the top of my head because we have gone through this phase here, you know, we, and we have come out of that. We, we, we have uh, achieved something, I'm sure. See, the, every, Kalpana put it very bluntly, uh, every organization needs mules, working horses, you know, people who, who slog a lot for the sake of the game. They benefit nothing. In fact, they'll be losing. They'll be going out of pocket. But the game will prosper. So uh, empty your wallets may get lighter, but I'm positive your happiness level will go up. <laughs> thank you so much thank for you. putting it such a nice way. Wow. Uh, Shanta, thank you. Um, I just want to, uh, staying on, gen on the topic of generating interest, I want to quickly uh, uh, bring in our panelist, Nadia here. Uh, and you put value on your happiness, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, the question is for Nadia. Nadia, we would like to understand from USA Cricket perspective, uh, regarding generating interest, right? whether there are any future plans to introduce school or college championships to encourage young boys and girls to take up cricket. Can you please comment on that, Nadia? Nadia, can you hear us? Can you please uh, unmute? Hi. 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 Yes, I can hear you. Um, yeah, so as, as Ajit mentioned, we've um, put together a, a strategy document and one of our strategic focuses being um, women and girls cricket. And so what we're working on within the organization is a women and girls plan. So um, we've got several committees within the organization. So um, for example, there's a development committee which is working on a, a plan for taking cricket into college as well as other schools. So that is on the way. And um, we would be here to ensure that there is a focus, uh, a female, a focus on on females. Fantastic! Uh, thank you. So, uh, it, there will be championships held uh, across state wise, or is it across schools or uh, universities wise in future? Yeah, so, so that is really and truly a long way off. Okay. You know, as, as Atul said, we, we can't fool ourselves here. It is a humongous job, mm -hmm. um, you know, mainly because we are strapped for resources and to be able to, to scale anything across the size of this country is really difficult. And one of the, the big differences with the US school system versus um, say maybe India is that we do not have a centralized school system. So what it means is that each state is basically like a different country. And even within each state, the schools are run by school districts, right? So um, if you have to take cricket to the schools, you have to go to each school district and form that, that partnership or that agreement with them. So it's going to take a really long time to be able to do that. Um, you know, we won't be able to do everything that we would like to right away. So we're truly looking at you know, at least a, a decade, a 10 year plan moving forward. Okay, thank you so much for that. Raghu, uh, Raghu, just to add on that, uh, thanks Nadia. So we do have a development committee which uh, looks into this championship tournament. Uh, so we formed another committee to just analyze what needs to be done to get a tournament at this scale. So that committee will look into it and they will come back and suggest what tournament has to be done and then how we can take this game to the next level. And then coming back to the adults, we do have a national championship. It's supposed to happen this year, which couldn't happen. Uh, probably next year, once COVID uh, goes off, we did conduct the zonal tournament uh, trials across, but there will be a national championship next year for adults and youth. We'll Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, um, Ajit. Um, talking about uh, schools and uh, the role that schools and, and colleges can play, I really want to bring in uh, Darshan here. 
Uh, what about clubs? We have so many clubs in Massachusetts, in New York, and what I have I have seen is I think Darshan, your club NECC was the first club to start a youth program very early in Massachusetts. I'm just curious to know how did you generate interest among the kids to take up cricket because. Uh, when we did the MSL under 18, most of the kids were from your academy. Uh, Darshan, do you want to uh, give your thoughts on this, please? Yeah, when I started the club, right, I, one thing I knew was that there's no way the club can grow without youth talent. And that's when we started. We adopted like 10 kids or 12 kids, and uh, we started training them in, back in 2010. But I want to, you know, basically we are all foot soldiers here. Me, you, uh, Vijayesh, and uh, Dilip. We are all the foot soldiers here. We are working out here for the youth development and uh, and Rutika for and Mira for uh, girls cricket, women's cricket, and stuff like that. I want to bring a few things of what you know a reality of Massachusetts or New England area. Uh, like Mr. Atul Rai said. He, the, the pathway to professional cricket is we should have a clear path. So for a kid to be a national player or, or to expose his talent or contribute to the country, they should have a clear path. And that we are missing. And I'm very excited. Ajit, your, your plans for, you know, getting, getting from the USA cricket some, some kind of a path or some, uh, some committees to help with us. So here, what we are seeing here is uh, Mr. Dilip, right, who is the president of uh, MSL. He worked like 18 to 20 hours, not on his work, just on cricket when it comes to the season. We have Raghu and Vijesh, who also spend the same amount of time, and I also spend the same amount of time. And there are multiple other people doing that. So to Jatin's point, it's just not people who want to do it, people who can do it. We have a lot of them here. And uh, financial aspects of it, we are managing our financial aspects. You know, basically we we support them, and the parents also are not worried about <laughs> anything about money. And the kids who want to go, but what we are not able to control is a huge, huge burst of people and interest. So we don't even have to go and give interest here. The interest is already there. If if every every year I get like. 10 schools, at least 10 schools, writing emails to me saying, can you come and talk about cricket? Can you come and uh, you know, give us a program? And if you, uh, if you ask for uh, training, there's so many kids who come. So many kids who come. Even the same thing, Ritika is also finding it in women's cricket. So we have a huge burst. So Mr. Atul and uh, Ajit, there's something like this, um, some kind of a leadership from the US cricket. I know it's very huge for you guys. It's a lot, lot for you to maintain. You have a, you know, one person maintain all the schools and all over USA. There's some leadership you can give us here because I'm telling you, it is growing so, so big here. It's just, we cannot even handle it. We need leadership here. We need guidance here. And uh, something like, okay, these are the things which are coming in. How can we handle this? But the problem is this, you neglect this burst and we're going to lose a lot of interest here. Like, you know, like Mr. Atul clearly said, these kids, they learn after some point, they they just jump out of because they, have, they don't have a clear pathway. So something like that, we really need out here in uh, New England area. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about New England area because like I said, we are foot soldiers here. We see it every day. And... Uh, we really need some some kind of an attention from there to see how we can handle this growth out here. Uh, Priya Darshan, just to In say, teams. very, very valid point. And uh, Vijayesh is one of the youth coordinator from your region who's going to work with that development. And the plans, he has it. And he would be the representative reaching to the local school. So we considered that and we formed a, a multiple volunteer group from each region who are really working hard. We identified them and Vijay is, is one of them. So just let you right, know. Right. Uh, we're talking about it, Ajit. Uh, so basically, yes, 
uh, now the schools themselves were talking to us so what next so how can we jay shine that's the biggest thing right so what what is the what is the what is the things we going to tell the school what do we what is the course material or something like that you know basic uh, yeah just, just to give you a brief a huge plan is coming just wait on we are working with a partner who will come up with a plan what you have to go to school what you need to talk what is the course how it's going to be implemented a huge plan is coming just have faith and wait with the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in month or two we'll come up with a great plan fantastic uh, thank you for uh, for darshan as well as ajit for constructive discussion thanks a lot uh, just want to uh, say on the same topic i just want to bring in our guest speakers uh, shanta and kalpana regarding the next question it is it is about uh, in, in with respect to youth development is uh, parents role in youth development as coaches you might have come across situation where you had to communicate to the parents regarding the overall development of their kids and their role in helping them achieve the same so what are the things that uh, you both uh, shanta and kalpana communicate to parents which can influence the kids in the right way uh shanta can you please uh, uh go out here um till recently i was uh, the, the chairperson of the selection committee of karnataka for, for all all age groups seniors till under 16 uh besides being the national uh, uh, chairperson but one thing i don't know out there <laughs> we used to keep the parents interference to the minimum i uh, because uh, uh, it it can get nasty we, you know invariably they start why is my daughter not going uh, at number 4 position number 3 position i we just do not allow oh. them to interfere you know, uh, because it gets too complicated i don't think but then uh, the scenario out there may be different that's you know you can't have the same rule everywhere because you may need the parents help both financially and otherwise also so uh, ground realities vary but uh, i would personally suggest unless the situation warrants do not give scope for parents to interfere they 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 may be very very um, honest in their intentions but you know it it will be wasted only because when i talk of my children or when i talk of something i'll think only of my kids likewise so i would keep it to the minimal but then uh, uh, before it skips my mind uh, uh, atul was talking about uh, grounds or uh, whatever coaches uh, jatin patel was talking about coaches i would suggest um ajit could uh, take up with icc or even nca national cricket academy which is based in bangalore rahul dravid is heading it um you can't have you can't be importing coaches i mean it's not practical you know what i would suggest is uh, either icc or even uh, nca can come uh, send a couple of their representatives hold the uh, uh, coaches a training course you know conduct some exam and give, you know uh, give accreditation it's it's possible and then it, you need to have local coaching you know not necessarily i mean uh, it, it could be indians or whatever people living there have to be main coach i'm sure jotsna and Ra- raj rajas anyway coaching there so uh, i'm sure she can give you more inputs but then uh, i don't know uh, you you say the summers are pretty hot so sujatha was once mentioning to me and so in some uh, um some regions it's only from so six months that it's possible uh, to play cricket so i would suggest uh, uh, even uh, the winters may not be possible so i'm sure having an indoor uh, state indoor uh, nets is not a tough it's not that expensive also you know where we have in national cricket academy nowadays every cricket academy in every street has uh, these uh, these indoor nets i mean this is one way of uh, offsetting the the imbalances caused by uh, seasonal changes 
that's one thing. Then uh, I'm sure Kalpana will have some inputs about the, the question you asked because I tend to uh, go astray, speak of a whole lot of things. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Uh, Kalpana, your thoughts, please. So I, I would like to add one point here. Before conducting uh, any coaching camp or anything like that, just have an induction course for the parents, not for the kids. Just have the, okay, for them. Tell them this is how it's going to be because it's very natural. No, the peer pressure will be there. The, as a parent, you definitely they would like their children to play well and give all the opportunities to their kids only. So have an induction course for uh, only for parents. Like you can educate them. Like this is how it's going to take and this is the time the kid needs to grow and learn the skill, game, everything. So I, it can really get on to you if the parents here also, we had a lot of problems. Like uh, even now, even under 16 selection means there are about 500, 600 kids, okay? Only kids come for the selections. Along with them, uh, parents will come too. And also a brother and sister, they will also come if there. And four people, coming to the coach and they will know better how many uh, balls the girl faced and how many she bowled and all that statistics they will have better than the coaches or the selectors. So it is better to have an induction course for the parents more than the kids. It's parents, I think nowadays it's, uh, it's getting on actually. Here it's very bad here. You can ask Jayashree also how the selectors are pressurized by the parents. So yes. my suggestion, it's, it's very natural. You can't avoid, but we have to educate them also. Very important point. Thank you so much for mentioning regarding election program. Definitely we will we'll, we'll include that as a part of our curriculum when we do our next session. Thank you so much, uh, Kalpana. Uh, staying with the youth development itself, I want to pass on the mic to Mira regarding the next question for our speakers. And going on. I think um, with the same topic, and thank you so much, Kalpi and Chanta, I think um, very rightly said, I think. And like Raghu said, we are going to incorporate, I think those are some very useful uh, tips for us to move forward with it. However, um, in, just in regards to this, I would also like to bring in Nadia here. Yeah. And if she can just uh, give us your thoughts, uh, I would appreciate that. Nadia? Are you there, Nadia? Hi there, sorry. I just- um, Oh, no worries. Thank you. I ran away for a quick second. Um, sorry, can you repeat your question? Uh, the question was regarding uh, parents. Uh, uh, how do you communicate to parents in order to influence their kids in the right way? And uh, as Kalpana and Shanta mentioned, it is very prevalent in India where right? you have parents pressured. Uh, so uh, have you seen this in US and how, how do you communicate to parents so that they can influence their kids in the right way? Yeah, that's... Um... <laughs> I think whether it's the US or any other country or any sport for that matter, that is a challenge. Um, uh, parents can get very involved in the game and I understand where Shanta is coming from. Um, at the same time here in the US, we, we do need the support of the parents. Um, and, and as Atul also mentioned in the AYSO, um, you know, that they, they get the, the parents involved as coaches. Um, how do we communicate to them? I think it's just a matter of, um, you know, whether you're the, the academy, the organization um, hosting the, the program or the event or whatever it may be. And um, just, you know, you just have to ensure that you put in place some protocols and, and you enforce them and, and you, you, you stick with it. Um, I have hosted a, a couple of youth tournaments, girls under 14 tournaments for the past two years. And so it's, it, it's been the first time bringing together um, girls in that age group to play in all girls cricket tournaments. And we've had those challenges of, of parents um, 
all with good intentions, of course, wanting the, their kids to do the best, um, also wanting to coach at the side. Um, but we've been just very, very firm with our protocols and our rules around the tournaments. And um, sometimes, I mean, for the most part, it is effective, but other times there are some some challenges and, and you get a few people slipping. But it's I think that's always going to be an ongoing um, challenge because also everyone just have, yeah, everyone has different perspectives, different um, backgrounds and and so it's it's just always going to be something that you have to manage on an ongoing basis. Thank you. Thank you so much for a very insightful answer, Nadia. Uh, do you want to move on to the next topic? Yes. Thank you, Raghu. And uh, thank you, Nadia. And uh, we are going to move a little, drift a little bit uh, different now in regards to leadership. Um, you both, Shanta and Kalpi, you've been very strong and fearless leaders as captains for many, many years. Now, um, in regards to that, how, how would you enlighten us in, you know, in regards to a good captaincy in a cricket team? And how important is it for us to have a leadership group around him or her? Chanta? Captaincy. There's always a misconception about captaincy. They, they feel it's, it, it's, it's a power that goes with it. No, it's a responsibility that goes with it because a captain uh, needs to do that much more for the team. Um, and uh, uh, many uh, uh, turn out to be unsuccessful captains basically because they are not able to go out and practically show how it is to be done, you know, for the other uh, the teammates to follow. This is the uh, major issue. But then, um, I, yes, I did have a long innings, uh, uh, but uh, to my advantage, I also played under quite a few. In fact, uh, Kalton has been my state captain, Sujata has been my, I have at least, uh, 10 people who have led the state side uh, and I have been one of the major players there. So uh, it, it is basically captaincy per se, I would say involves a lot of sacrifice. Besides, you know, the strategy and things like that, you have to think not just for yourself, but for the team. So uh, many of us feel captaincy means a lot of power and glamour. No, I tell you, it is, it's a lot of responsibility and uh, we need to uh, set an example on the field. And uh, Jyotsna has led uh, MP in Central Zone. Rajeshwari has led MP in Central Zone. Suji led uh, uh, Karnataka. Kalpana has led Karnataka. So uh, <laughs> point here is captaincy per se, involves sacrifice and the realization should dawn that being a captain means you have to be subservient to the interests of the team and, uh, and your teammates. I think that's one thing where most of us ignore that. But once that, that aspect is lodged in your mind, I think anyone can become a good captain. Wonderful. Thank you, Shanta. Profound. I, I think this is so, so apt and it is for the upcoming captains, you know, in, in the U.S. I think that that gives a lot and it weighs a lot for them to look into that perspective as to how you, having been a captain for so many years, are giving your, um, you know, your idea to it. Definitely, we will incorporate that and thank you much for that. Um, Kalpi, now um, over to you. And what are your thoughts in regards to the same um, question about captaincy and uh, leadership? Captaincy is uh, more responsibility. Okay, that's one thing. And the, you need to be, uh, you need to develop your players also. You need to know how they are, which 
uh, you can I can give the example of Dhoni also. See, under the, his captaincy, so many players have come up, like Jadeja or Suresh Raina. So many. You need to be little. Uh, you can't be selfish there. You need to be selfless and see that other players also prosper under you. That's also a uh, captaincy material only. Uh, I think it's basically a um, lot of responsibility. Leadership is responsibility. And also, not only on the field, off the field also, you have to do a lot of uh, talking. And I can say donkey's job also. It's, it's like a mastery. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, mastery, the... Yes, <laughs> of course. Yeah, you need to be that. So a lot of other uh, job also, captain's responsibility only. It's not just playing. Of course, you have to show the way unless you take responsibility and score runs and win games for your side. No, no player is going to respect you. So that's all. It's a it's lot of work. Captaincy is a lot of work. It's not easy. Only on field, it looks, on TV, it looks very easy. But it's a very hard job. Perfect. Thank you so much. I think it is show by example. And you rightly said it. I think we all um, have to have that responsibility. And uh, showing by example makes, makes a difference, definitely. Uh, in, in the same token, I would like to bring in uh, Dilip. Dilip, in regards to the captaincy and the leadership, um, you as a president, I'm sure you hold a lot on your shoulders. I would love to hear as to what you have to say in regards to the U.S. Uh, team. But also, please uh, let us know the secrets of uh, uh, leading teams to championship in your golden days. <laughs> So uh, for me, it's like a leadership or a captain, captaincy is all the visionary stuff, right? So the, as a captain, you know your strength and weaknesses and as your team's uh, strength and weaknesses. And when you play against someone else, right, <clears throat> we know their team's strength and weaknesses too. So that's how we, it goes, right? Offense and defenses. Uh, but I... I, when Raghu asked me about the question about how we lead to that, so there there is a lot of efforts comes like happens with before we come to the game, right? And that is where all the leadership comes, and uh, the the way we try to train uh, our uh, teammates uh, is differently. Our when I am talking about uh, uh, my myself is like. A, our club and all, right? So our club philosophy is different than any other club. And we won only one championship in MS, in MSCL. And uh, uh, there are two teams which were predominantly was dominating MSCL all, all years. Uh, uh, we were also coming and in going into playoffs all, all the time. So we are not able to finish that hump. And uh, what we we try to do that hey every time we go we to play, we play we try to uh, figure it out how they play and how we basically use their weaknesses and uh, use our strength uh, let's go this <clears throat> this time with full strength so that is how we basically won the championship but uh, about the leadership what I wanted to talk about is is that that is more important because what we have done in last three years with, uh, uh, with the friends uh, uh, we have right now, right here with the, with the Darshan, Kritika, Mira, you, right? Raghu, uh, Vijesh. What we, do, we basically figure, figured out is that, yes, there are, there, is, there are youths, there are women, they want to also play cricket. And we are the one who can basically fig- have to figure it out how to give them a cricket. And... <clears throat> We went to the school. This is like I'm talking. I'm here in US since 2000, and we were uh, going to the schools and uh, colleges uh, and try to uh, bring the cricket, uh, introduce cricket to them. Uh, but the prog- the problem with them is that they could find like a four or five guy- guys who is interested in playing. They couldn't field a team. So how basically these schools can find a figure, uh, form, form a team and they play together. We said that, okay, forget about that because they're not going to get like a, all, all the members. 
how we can get those four or five guys, bring it together and form a team for them. So that's the approach we did two, two years ago and that was a full success. That, that's where we could be able to find. I think we lost you. I, Dilip, I think we lost you because we can't hear you. No, we can't. We are not able to hear you. Not yet. Not yet. Probably we'll, we'll get back uh, when we pass through the uh, technical difficulty. But thank you so much for the answer, though. Uh, we want to just quick. Sorry. Uh, can you hear us, Dilip? Yes, can, we can hear you now. Please go ahead. So probably, I mean, we, since there are some technical difficulties, we'll move on to the next topic, uh, which is uh, most one of the most popular and favorite topic among uh, today's youth, that is T20 cricket. Uh, so these are the questions for our speakers, uh, uh, Shanta and Karpana. First thing is, uh, T20 cricket has been a phenomenal success and a massive hit among uh, current generation. Where do you see Test cricket, which we all love, at least my generation, your generation love, say in 10 years time. And, and second part of the question is, what can we do to keep a balance between T20 and test cricket? Uh, Kalpana, do you want to go first, please? See, T20 cricket, yes, for, to attract crowd and to make the match interesting and it it's a very fast game. It finishes finishes off in uh, three hours. But if you want to play good cricket, even in T20 also, you need a solid skill base. So for that, they need to play two-day game, three-day game and test cricket. And test cricket is something, uh, there is no substitute for the test cricket. It's a quality cricket. T20 is okay. Uh, it's a crowd puller, mainly it, it attracts a lot of crowd and things like that. But to play T20 also, you need skill. The base should be good. So the foundation should be good. That's why uh, they need to play. I am actually for uh, test cricket only. I love test cricket and I have played test cricket also. And it's, uh, it's entirely uh, fun and uh, so much of uh, skill is involved in that. Whereas in T20, it's now more a power game. So I feel test cricket, they have, it has to come back actually. At some point, I think they, even ICC also is thinking on those lines to bring back test cricket. I think I, I am for uh, test cricket and 50 over game. T20, okay, for fun, uh, IPL, it's a it's, uh, cash rich, a tournament. So all that is fine, but uh, to play T20 also, you need good skill base. Absolutely. Very true. Uh, thank you so much for, for your answer. Uh, Shanta, your, your thoughts, please. Basically, um, my only uh, thought is you need to have the right balance. People now have uh, no time and no patience to watch a five-day game. But then, as Kalpana rightly put, uh, put it, it, is, um, it, it requires a lot of endurance, willpower, technical skills, test cricket. This is the, the shorter version is uh, bam, bang, you know, just go out and hit. But then it also needs... Uh, you need to have your basics right. Uh, my only regret still is uh, when I was the chairman of the National Selection Committee, I used to prevail upon the board to ensure that at least one test was played by the Indian women. Hmm. New Zealand refused. They say we don't have it at all. They refused to play a test match. We could convince South Africa and England uh, you know, to play one test, but 
but fortunately the men uh, still play the test but then gradually you know uh, maybe we are getting americanized uh, uh, more day by day so uh, it, it could be you know as time as as we progress uh, i feel test cricket may recede to the background and uh, the shorter versions uh, make surge to the front because one day game and t20 can definitely mo be more interesting but if you want to test someone's temperament someone's skill endurance power everything i think any day test matches i uh, you know looking at the t20 today i never played t20 in my time so uh, uh, but that would have been my cup of tea so that's the type of game i used to play but then um so i used to play a game alien to my nature in test matches because a lot of responsibility uh, being the captain and perhaps one of the main batters so i had to play a game alien to me to ensure that the team uh, uh, doesn't lose out uh, but i would have loved to play t20 let's let, let me admit it because uh, mm, it's it's fun and you know now the paying public they come for the love of the game they want entertainment and uh, cricket and i think it, t20 has all these elements in it fantastic thank you so much so insightful thanks a lot shanta uh uh we we going to move on to the last question before we open the floor for questions from panelists to our speaker as well as our audience uh, uh, uh when we when we were coached back in our days uh, there was a process to it uh, what i mean by process is uh, practice and then hard work everyday practice sessions which which were a kind, which were so kind of which had a continuity to it uh, i want to emphasize this shanta i recently watched your interview on youtube where you talk about intuition and how intuition comes only after practice and hard work so i want to ask a question regarding how much would you emphasize on the training process to the current young generation who seems to want instant gratification or success because of the influence of t20 cricket i would love to know please i think that's precisely the main reason why many players fall by the wayside you know they don't last long in, in, because they want quick results you know uh, you don't get uh, maggi noodles you know you just take it in 2 minutes you cook and eat uh, it, 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 that's not it, it done in cricket you need to it needs a lot of uh, uh, efforts and perseverance basically so what's happening is many who click in the uh say in indian premier league is perhaps the most sought after a uh, league in the world more than playing for the country the youth of india want to play in the ipl mainly because of the money there's a lot of money in it but what happens is when they when they are tested in the international arena they don't click they fail that's because you know their basics aren't right so uh, um, you know uh, since you're all uh, most of you are pretty young why is virat kohli considered a great player not just because he's got the runs because he has the basics right that's the reason he can do well in any format of the game very true if you have your basics right you can do well anywhere whereas uh, um there are some who play only ipl they know they don't give a damn whether they play for the for the country or not i'm sorry but that uh, you know that's something we need to inculcate in the youth that there is more to the game than just money because the honor of playing for the country you know is i think that's beyond everything so uh, yes i have, test cricket was something we enjoyed thoroughly but you know we can't be uh, saying no we used to play only test cricket we should continue no 
it, it see it has evolved now. T20 is, is has come to stay. So it will have it, and I feel as we progress, as time progresses, we'll have more T20 than Test matches. I think we'll have to accept that. Sad, but that's the truth. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much. I completely, we all completely agree that uh, in, a youngster should have his basics right in order to succeed in all the three formats. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Nira, do you want to uh, take us to the next section, please? Yes. Now, so it is open. Uh, we, are, we have been asking you uh, both so many questions and, you know, such good responses and uh, advice which you uh, both have provided us. I think uh, it'll take us a long way. And thank you so much for that. Um, now, since we can keep asking you, Shantan, but you know, there's no end to it, but I have to kind of put a stop somewhere and I have to give the opportunity and open this floor for all the panelists. And of course, uh, we do have Kritika, Jyotsna, Rajeshwari, and um, Nadia. Um, Nadia, as well as Suji. And if, please, raise your hand on the chat and we would be able to unmute you at this point. Krutika, I think, left. She, she posted yeah, the okay. message okay. saying she's uh, going out. I just saw in the chat. I do would also like to say um, probably Jatin, Mr. Jatin, if you can, uh, if you have something or the, any of the panelists, Mr. Ajit, Atul, I'm, I'm leaving the floor open. I was going to uh, just uh, chime in on uh, what uh, Shanta and Kalpana said about test cricket. You know, um, there is no doubt in everybody's mind. Uh, you talk to, you know, everybody, the players in the world, you know, whether you talk to Sunil Gavaskar or the Richards or anybody uh, that you talk to, the nuances of the game don't come to you unless you play long enough or you play the longer version of the game. And so when Ajatin is the coach and he, he can attest to this, that you got to tell the kids to have patience because the cricket is a game of patience, right? You have to have the patience. So patience doesn't, T20 doesn't teach, teach you patience. So therefore you need to learn the game the right way to be able to then apply it to the shorter version of the game. And, uh, and, and as, uh, Shanta said, you know, we have come to accept the reality, which is that T20 is here to stay. And then, of course, in a country like the US, and I believe that that's where the foundational plan is now that the USA just released the foundational plan. And they talk about T20 is the future of US cricket and all of that. But I still believe that the kids need to learn the longer version of the game. So at the younger level, the youth level, that I think we need to emphasize that. And uh, the ICC also has talked about separating the full membership based on, you know, uh, uh, not just the uh, test playing countries to, and just to promote the game and increase the participation and all of that. They have changed, they're trying to change the criteria. So uh, it may not just be limited to test uh, countries, but to others as well. So that's the basis of the foundational plan from US cricket is assuming that at some point that will come to reality. And uh, the Olympics for that matter in 2028 Olympics in the LA will obviously involve, you know, hopefully it will involve US by, that, by then. And uh, so therefore, I think the T20 will be play, you know, the Olympic game will obviously be T20. It wouldn't be a full day game. So, uh, but, uh, you know, talk about, uh, I think Raul Dravid made a statement uh, a couple of days ago about welcome, welcoming the uh, inclusion of uh, Olympics, uh, you know, uh, cricket in the Olympics. So, but he made a statement about uh, facilities, you know, hopefully we'll have enough facilities by then in the US to play. So the development of infrastructure is one of the key objectives of US cricket, you know, and, uh, so in LA, of course, we were fortunate to have four nicer facilities. But back in the days when Shanta was talking about Bangalore, uh, National College grounds or the Central College grounds, I, I remember playing in those grounds, you know, and we didn't have Chinasawe Stadium. So, and it was, you know, all those pebbles and the matting wickets and all of that. But, you know, game has evolved. Today, we actually are insistent on 
you know, everybody playing on turf cricket because when the national team plays outside in tournaments, the one thing that we always see is that they're not able to cope up with the turf, uh, you know, and the ball swings differently. It does a lot of things on the turf as against your matting wicket. So that's why I think the, that is a key aspect of development of the game. So I think Rao uh, David was right on when he said, you develop the infrastructure, develop the facilities. So there are different areas of the game that we need to uh, focus on. Uh, you know, when you talk about development, you know, uh, participation is one thing, but also providing them opportunities. And my key uh, focus also is to, uh, providing centers of excellence. You know, in USA is a big country. How do we allow these, you know, youngsters who want to improve their skills? Where can we provide such opportunities? You know, they, we talk about indoor facilities. And I would say develop centers of excellence, you know, develop maybe six centers to begin with and have the, these people go and, you know, focus and improve that game. And, you know, and then you have an opportunity to take them to the next level and then, you know, <laughs> and increase uh, tournaments and, you know, international tournament, bring in quality, you know, uh, opposition and so that they can, the, our players can increase the skill levels. So anyway, there are different areas, and I, I digress, but I'm just saying, then we can focus on all of those areas and Absolutely. see how we can improve this. Yeah, thank you so much. We are so running out of time, unfortunately, and we would love to hear more, but I would just like to give a, a few minutes for Jyotsna, uh, as well as Rajeshwari, who is in, uh, I know, has been doing wonderful things in Houston. So right now, I would like to uh, open this to Jyotsna, and if you can say a couple of words, please, for us. Jyotsra? Yeah, hello, everyone. Happy Diwali and Happy New Year. Happy Diwali to you, too, Jyotsra. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you all, too. Shanta, it's been a long time. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say. But uh, <laughs> we are, yeah, we're trying very hard to promote uh, women's and girls um, team here in uh, Tampa, uh, Florida, and of course, everywhere else in the other states. Uh, Rajeshwari also trying very hard to, you know, promote uh, girls, women's, but hardly there any I hear from her. Um, and um, in Boston, also there are quite a few women there when I was there playing with you guys or against you. <laughs> uh, but it's been fun and I still like to play uh, cricket as much as I can. Um, I don't play like I used to before, of course. <laughs> but that's all I have to say. And um, we all should work together as a team and promote uh, women's girls uh, cricket uh, in the United States. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Yeah. It's so Thank nice you. seeing you, Jyotsa. Uh, Rajeshwari, can, you uh, can we have a word from you, please? Uh, yes. Uh, it's been an honor and privilege to be part of this uh, uh, conversation today. I'm so uh, happy to be introduced to all of y'all. I've been coaching in Houston since last six years. We incepted youth cricket over here in 2014, and I've been coaching boys uh, absolutely no girls in my net as yet so uh, yeah so we're trying our best but i uh, from what i uh, and i would uh, uh, imagine shanta would agree uh, uh, whenever i go and coach over here and i realize that how the, the how cricket is being incepted in women's in youth is basically parents paying up and we are finding sponsors and stuff that's precisely how we uh, incepted women's cricket in 1973 in India. So around 71, 72, we started and 73, we had our first nationals. So to me, it's like uh, uh, starting it all over again, where mm -hmm. parents are paying children. Only the only difference when you say that the parents expect too much out of mm -hmm. like when their participation is mainly because we used to take a bike or a scooter and go and play on the grounds. Whereas parents in USA typically have to drop and pick up their children. Mm -hmm. So they become part of it. Sometimes we end up having them as coaches too, when we need volunteer coaches. So we kind of end up, uh, end up uh, 
co- telling them how to coach and as far as the basics are concerned uh, well we were, were taught in nis patiala and to me <laughs> basics are that. the most important thing to promote youth cricket so i do not let a single boy get out of my net and try to hit the ball just haphazard without going through the basics awesome. absolutely so, with you. <laughs> so i can volunteer and come and coach all over usa to have their basics out of their first uh, foundation being basics and as far as the structure of this tournaments is concerned i i am not yet co- connected with women's cricket so much but i would typically think the way we used did it in india that you have interstate like you first have inter clubs basically then you form a team interstate uh, as far as uh, like suppose jotsna says that she has a tampa gladiators or spartans or the names that we give here instead i would rather have tampa or uh, like in houston i would rather have austin play against austin uh, in dallas austin houston and all the other st- uh, districts over here to play form a texas team and then i would rather have interstate and then go into nationals form proper zones and have coaching camps like we used to have mm. we would select the best of the whole of our country put them in coaching camps and then form our national teams so i would typically looking at my uh, uh, times when i played is i would write rather have it structured properly when we have more girls and women take interest in playing the game and uh, thank you so much good to see shanta jotsna kalpana after so long and uh, getting introduced to all of you all all the best thank you so uh, much i like to add a few very things mira i like to add a few things shanta nice to see you again legend was looking for it but here is a good news for you during this corona i launched a huge project in india with the sports authority of india as well as government of gujarat and two big companies i have absolutely free cricket coaching for the women in india if the young girls coming to this program we have 300000 dollar available for the scholarships to take care of their school part and cricket playing situation so anyone wants it reach out to me vijay ragu somebody and we'll give you contact how to go through in india but my opinion i'm coming from this world my mother did not go college i believe if we provide the education and this coaching knowledge we are developing a good human being this ladies will learn something we call it life learning essentials from the coaching which they can use in their future life uh, as far as uh, fans concern players is the one who brings the fan excellent thank you so much mr the biggest challenge the biggest challenge i talked it uh, means we listen a lot of about parent thank i will say parent is a number one fan absolutely and i totally he's the one brings the support for you yes and don't forget he is bringing financial money to you so That's when you dealing in us parent is your number one person you want to help on your side Thank you Jatin. If you Thank can't you. win the parent you're going nowhere. The problem is <laughs> a lot of coaches wants to dictate the parents. That's not right thing. To me in my coaching I always say ask the parents and player what is their expectation and find the best solution. You cannot Thank please each so and much. every parent. But they have some expectation and are you trying to good enough to help them to achieve that goal? If we can't do it it's a follow up continues and that's the biggest challenge is the volunteers i will hard to say i have a couple of board members but i always talk the truth they're not going to like it this statement but we are in horrible situation in us period you go out in baseball soccer basketball any game in your town and tell them you want to become a volunteer and see the response what we have the system volunteer has to apply then they will do the interview and find the right people those are the people need the positions not the work what the us sports does any volunteer is welcome 
Let me tell you frankly. Thank you. Once you join them, they'll find what quality you belong. Are you a good coach? Are you a good official? Are you a good administration? And they will keep you with them. So that's, I will say, ladies has to step up. We have a lot of work to do. Thank but you. I always believe yes. you do what you love to do and Thank you'll be in good so shape. I, I do really appreciate it. And we do, uh, we would have loved to hear more from you, but unfortunately due to constraint of time and you know, I don't want to hold up Shanta and Kalpi and they have been very gracious with their time and absolutely all the viewers it's also, they have been very um, gracious with their time since we are running over. But um, I would now, um, we do have some questions which was um, received from all our viewers, which we don't want to miss. So which is towards uh, Shanta and Kalpana. I would give it over now to Raghu for him to address those. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you, Mira. So we, we got some uh, very interesting questions from our audiences as well uh, to our speakers. Let me begin with uh, Ravi Ayer. So, uh, what is your most memorable cricketing moment and why? Shanta, would you want to go first, please? My career spanned uh, 21 years. So, uh, mm, it's hard, but uh, uh, I can tell you uh, uh, the highs a century I got, um, the, uh, uh, the test that we won, you know, uh, which was a trendsetter. I, I think winning that test did a lot more for women's cricket than so many years of playing, because you see, Ultimately, people look and appreciate winners. They look at the winners only. So that is one thing. I, I got my Arjuna Award uh, uh, without my applying for it, without my association recommending it. WCA did not. So, I, you know, those people. So uh, when and that one of the... Uh, those days, it used to be called the All India Inst uh, Council of Sports. Uh, one of the uh, members there told me that, you know, your association didn't apply, but we went by your newspaper, you know, what all you've achieved and got. So these are the things, small things, but it matters. But uh, I have a law. I, I, I played for Karnataka for 21 years. I could never win the national championship. We were runners up nine years till I played. Nine years, but we could never win the national. That's my biggest regret. But then uh, it's not fulfilled even till date. We, they became runners once after I quit. So, but the, we haven't won the national championship. That's, that's things. Uh, but then uh, uh, overall, yes, the highs, uh, winning a test, playing for the country itself, getting a century and some records, but then uh, the biggest joy ever is, I know I'm uh, guilty of repeating it quite a few times I've said it, we laid a solid foundation for the game to grow. That I feel, that, that's the biggest uh, contributor of joy. So rightly said. I think the foundation is something where you need that to even move forward. Definitely. Thank you so much for your answer. Kalpana, uh, could you please uh, uh, answer the question? What is your most memorable cricket moment and why? Um, playing for India, wearing an India cap in uh, 1986 and also playing in the World Cup and uh, making a record in the World Cup. Uh, wicket keeping record, most memorable one. And uh, now of late, uh, coaching, uh, having uh, helped Rajeshwari to play mm -hmm. for India and uh, watching her success, it's really a pleasure for me. And uh, it's also memorable for me. Absolutely. You know, the joy that you get watching your kids or your uh, kids that you coach play is something special. Thank you so much for that. Uh, next question for, uh, I would like to start with Kalpana, you, yourself itself, please. Other than India, which country did you enjoy playing in the most and why? England, when I went to, when I first played for India, 
uh, in 1986 and you won't believe we had a two months camp a two months tour and every other day we used to travel and play and uh, most of the matches i think in uh, three four games i got player of the match award and uh, it was actually amazing experience for us it was very new because every day uh, every other day we used to travel and play a match and after the i think we played around 20 25 county games right suji do you remember i think so yeah i think we played that and it was really fun actually playing and then we, then we went into test match and one day we played one day also so that was the best part and australian tour was uh, i only played in one test so i didn't enjoy much but the wicket was like uh, it used to come to the bat very nicely we can we used we, we could stroke well then of course 1993 world cup was awesome fantastic that was a, that was really a challenge for us we came fourth our indian team we stood fourth in that competition Nice, very nice. nice. Thank you, uh, Shanta. Uh, your answer, please. With, other than India, which country did you enjoy playing the most? New Zealand. You see, uh, 1976, uh, mm, very successful uh, tour of uh, 76, 77. Uh, very successful tour of uh, New Zealand. We played in the national championship. Uh, mm, Uh, the sense of pride i can say we didn't lose a single game in the entire series you know uh, uh, either we won or it was a draw even the test was was a draw so uh, i i would say yes new zealand uh, because of those days we landed in australia next day was a test match i mean you know it uh, from new zealand to australia uh, it's entirely different the pitch was so different it uh, you know hard bouncy wickets of uh, at that too one of the hardest wickets perth from uh, dunedin we flew to perth and played a test and played miserably because we just couldn't uh, get used to the variation in the pace uh, but then later on nowadays our, our, our girls are doing well there because they go well in advance uh the, they get acclimatized they get used to the pitches so yes for me new zealand has been pretty special fantastic thank you so much uh, uh probably i'll i'll, I'll uh, stay with you shanta i want to ask you another question from ravi air which is pretty interesting who is your favorite uh women cricketer among today's players and why if you feel like not answering it's fine as well i don't know i have no such uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> There's no problem with that, you know. I uh, I feel uh, uh, Mitali uh, is a very accomplished batsman. Mitali Raj, the current One Day uh, captain. In fact, uh, I was the chairman of the selection committee when we named her as the captain of India those days. Uh, <coughs> she's uh, brilliant now, uh, but then I just saw her uh, in the. T20 uh, challenge at uh, uh, in in Sharjah um she she looked rusted because <laughs> in because of the pandemic she hasn't played for a year now and uh, she has actually um, uh, called it a day for T20 but then uh, the selectors uh, it was basically to showcase women's cricket uh, in IPL because it's a global platform that's the reason they hold those matches hopefully in a couple of years or so uh bcci would like to uh from what i read in the papers just in case someone says uh, are you watching for it no no what i have read is that bcci would like to uh, uh introduce franchise based ipl for women also maybe 2 3 years down the line but i feel that that should do a lot of good to to uh, broad base women's cricket in india because we need a lot more players and that could be one of the incentives for many to start the game absolutely thank you so much uh, kalpana uh, do you have any uh, 
uh, favorite players, pick for the favorite players among current women uh, Indian team? Oh yeah, Rajesh Shuri Gaikwad. And what? There you go, Shanta answer for Karuna, fantastic. Uh, thank you. We have more questions, but I think uh, we have already covered most of the topics from the questions, so I apologize for- Prasad and Lakshmi. Uh, they have, if you were to change anything the way cricket is played today, what would it be? They've asked here in the chat. Yes. I think uh, if you want to answer, please go ahead, Chanta. I, I would like to put the clocks back and play all over again. <laughs> That's the only thing I would like to <laughs> you go back in the time machine and come to 2020 and start playing again. If my body allows it. <laughs> Okay. Thank you for that. There are, as I said, there are certain questions which, for which you've already given the answers to. But there's one, one um, very different question. Uh, this is by Suhas Kashyap. Um, how can someone with a background in data analysis pursue a cricketing career as a data analyst? Uh, either of you want to comment? See, uh, cricket is now a a most sought after career, not just playing, coaching, uh, 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 fitness trainer, physiotherapist, video analyst, data analyst, statistician, umpiring, you name it. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty paying uh, in, in, according to Indian standards. So uh, anything is, see, we have a, those days we lacked all this. A video analyst, end of the day, you know, we, we get to look at uh, who played how, and we could analyze what could be done to curb her stroke play or to get her out. Those, were the, those are the inputs a video analyst can give and help the team do better. We, we lack those things those days. We, we did it just by our talent and instinct, but then, um, any career associated with cricket in the cricketing countries, uh, uh, England, Australia, uh, India, New Zealand, uh, uh, I think basically now these are the four major uh, cricketing uh, countries because uh, South Africa is having its own problem, Pakistan is having its own problem. So uh, uh, I would, West Indies is having its own problems, but then uh, these four countries, I think, if, if, you do, if you are a good video analyst, if you're a good umpire, if you're a good coach, fitness trainer, a physiotherapist, you, you, your career is made. So uh, uh, that way cricket can provide livelihoods to quite a few in these countries. Thank you so much for, for that. Appreciate it, Shanta. Thank you, Shanta. Um, it's that time of the hour for us. It is 11.15 for you. I, we have helped you, held you up quite a bit. Um, a final uh, words from both of you. We would like to, uh, before we can conclude, um, I would like to hear something from you, you and then we'll move on to Kalpi. I, I thought at least here you should give her a chance to speak first. Absolutely. Let's go with Kalpi. I don't know how to speak. She feels so. No, no. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Mira. Thanks for, uh, thanks everyone for uh, having me here on this. And I really wish you all the best. If you, in case, if you need any help or anything, anything like that, feel free to mail me or call me nothing if it's for everybody i'm there to help you i'm very passionate about cricket so i'll do anything for cricket thanks a lot you know that i have recorded this and you know that in a year's time i will be seeing you physically here i hope you you will keep those words and i will... yeah, yeah, sure hope so if i'm physically fit definitely i'll make it absolutely you will Thank you so much for Thank you so much. It was wonderful. Thanks, thanks, everybody. And I hope we gave you enough opportunities this time to speak. But we do have more. You know, we can always have these um, these sessions, and we would love to hear from both of you. Uh, Shanta, over to you, please. Yeah, uh, it's been a great session talking to all of you. 
I, I, I think I admire most of you here because you're doing things for the passion of the game. I know you're not benefiting here. You'll be giving your time, your money, your energy, everything. But then let me tell you, God will make it up for you in other ways. You know, uh, we, we all have done it in the past. It's been a, um, a momentous uh, career for all of us, you know, seeing women's cricket grow. Likewise, ultimately, what is it that we crave for in life? Satisfaction. So, you know, if you are satisfied that you're doing a good job, nothing like it. it it's been wonderful talking to you. Um, at least this way we get to see uh, Jyotsna, Suji, uh, Raju. I, I, I saw um, Supriya there. Uh, so my point is, uh, thank you very much. Let me tell you, the route is not easy. Well, that, it's an obstacle race that you're all uh, participating in. But let me tell you, at the end of the race, what you are going to feel, that the sense of satisfaction, the fulfillment will more than make up for all the sacrifices that you are making. Keep doing it, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. God bless USA Cricket. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Such, such wonderful words and uh, such thoughtful words as well, which you have provided us. I think the roots, as you said, is very true for us, as well as the passion, which we all are growing and we are going to branch out like crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have such passionate people like you and Kalpi who are there and the panelists. I cannot thank you all. Uh, Jatin, Mr. Atul, Mr. Ajit, Mr. Dilip, and uh, Darshan. Darshan, thank you so much for being here and, you know, making it such a success for us being the first ever Mic conversation, as we call it, by hosted by Hoysala, and of course, Vijayesh, the founder of this organization. Um, and uh, I cannot thank enough to. Is Vijayesh hiding behind a curtain or something? He hasn't yeah. come forward. Yeah, I, think... I know. We didn't even get to see him. <laughs> yes, we will definitely ask him to come over. Mm -hmm. uh, Jyotsna, Rajeshwari, and Suji, I didn't see you, but we didn't get an opportunity to ask you a few questions, but we will. Here is our uh, dear Vijesh. Asanji. Mm. <laughs> Thank you so much. Vira, <laughs> um, I have a suggestion. When, yes. uh, you know, next time when you do this, yes. you fix a time limit. Because uh, uh, we don't mind. We enjoyed it. Because, you know, uh, but initially when you started, you had 40 participants. It's now dropped to 27. Yes. So... Uh, you, you, you have to sustain the interest of all everyone. So yes. fix the time limit so that you know you you can sustain the interest for, of everybody. Like you used to always tell me, Shantra, learn by mistakes. I think we will learn by mistakes. No, no. I, I'm just <laughs> it's your first session. Of course. I think you should keep doing this with other uh, cricketers from different parts of the world, yes. but fix a time time limit so that you know we can. Uh, sustain the interest of everyone. Hospital races begin. On you as well to bring in some good talent so that we can continue the session which we believe in so passionately to have people here and to spread the word. So I'm definitely going to rely on you both to bring in more talent here. I think you you have in-house <laughs> talent there. Yes, so I think you should tap them. You know, that they can be great help to you. Suji. Atul said something which I yeah. couldn't hear properly. I, I said, uh, Shanta, the obstacle race has begun. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's what right, he said. Yeah. Over to Raghu. Thank you so much once again to our guest, uh, to our panelists and to our, our audience as well. As Mira said, we're going to keep doing this um, over the winter as well as in the coming year as well. So once again, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for being here. Uh, stay safe and happy Diwali again. Take care, everybody. Take care. Happy Diwali to everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Nice Diwali. seeing you, Suji. Thank you. Thank you. Jai